How's it going, everybody? Thanks for having us. Um, real pleasure to be here and just have these great people with me. Um, Seb, who I've known for a while and has been on my podcast, we've chatted quite a bit. I have these guys um, make sure they get their cameras working and microphones working um, and we can get started with them. If you guys don't know about me, um, I'm what I call an NFT archaeologist. I discover old projects, look for old projects, and then try and relaunch them. So that's what I've been doing for the last six months or so. Um, part of that is talking with people uh, like Seb and Crypto Arte. Um, I certainly didn't discover that, but I, I did um, have Seb on my podcast and talk about it and get it out to a wider audi audience, which um, I like doing and like telling stories uh, like that. So, um, Seb, are you there? I can't see everybody. If uh, are you guys? Do you guys have your cameras yeah. up in your? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Adam. Um, should Should we start our cameras as well? Yeah, go ahead and start your camera, Abby. Uh, if you're there, go ahead and start your camera and your microphone. There's Seb, my man. What's up, brother? Um, hey. There's Abby. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Lacos, how I you just doing? Joined, hey, Adam. Abby, how you doing? Good yourself. Doing great. Everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Um, and so I just met Abby and Lacos uh, off in our own personal waiting room, and it's really nice to meet them. Um, why don't I give each one of you 30 seconds or so just to tell everybody kind of what you are uh, and what you're working on right now. So Seb, why don't you start us off? Sure. Thank you, Adam. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. Really excited uh, for the panel. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Sebastian Brocher. I'm originally from Argentina. I'm uh, computer engineer by training, entrepreneur by heart, and artist uh, by soul. That's a, I like to summarize it. Uh, built crypto art back in 2018, like uh, Adam was saying. And it's been quite the uh, quite the amazing journey since then uh, on, on, on NFTs. So glad to be here, excited uh, for the chat. Awesome. And you guys can see Seb's uh, art behind him. Those are part, those are crypto art days. You can get those printed. Um, and I'm sure we got links and everything uh, where you guys can check out Crypto Arte. It's one of my favorite uh, NFT projects. Abby, um, I checked out your work earlier today. It's amazing and beautiful. Um, you want us to tell us a little bit about yourself for a second, Abby? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. I'm a British artist. Um, I make abstract works, as you can see, and I've started making NFTs with them in January. So still relatively new, but we're getting there. <laughs> no, you're OG, Abby. You're OG crypto, man. If you were in since January, you're definitely OG. And Abby gets super shout out because she's up at like two in the morning in the UK. So big shout out to Abby. Uh, Lacos, man, how you doing, brother? Good, yourself? Great. You want to tell the people a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So I'm one of the co-founders for the uh, Koala Intelligence Agency project. It's one of the uh, 10K um, avatar projects in the space right now. I've been in NFTs for about a year, um, came over here from looking for the technology, which I found quite interesting. My background's in marketing and digital and uh, strategic development. Um, so I started into the whole um, NFT art. Um, and just kept going with the tech. And now I ended up um, building a, a huge community with the uh, KIA. Why don't we start with you then? Because this is interesting and I think it's cool. Uh, a lot of people talk about community and community building. And when we think about it, most of us, we think about 10K projects, right? Um, so I'd like to start with you first, because you've actually done it. Um, and then work our way down to Abby, who deals with like, personal connect collectors and stuff like that. So I think it'd be interesting to hear kind of the scope of that. Can you can you walk us a little bit through your vision of community building and what it means to you? For sure. So for us with the 10K projects, obviously you're looking at a much larger audience. Um, and, and really the way we wanted to build it, it was focus on community and create something that people want to be a part of. Um, so we, our approach was organic. We, I've, we've been in the space for a while. We wanted to connect with various different people from the crypto space, from the art space and, and the profile or the, the community aspect of these 10K projects. 
And uh, we really started just creating um, a super fun Discord for people that just want to hang out there. Um, we have a, a great team that's been helping us create all sorts of engaging activities for our community. Um, we have uh, weekly uh, events, spaces on Twitter, game nights, streaming, whatnot. And, and for us, it's really what can we do to create um, something that's interesting that people want to be a part of. So mm -hmm. for, for the project, it's always community first based on what we're building. Yeah, I think a lot of 10K projects that I've seen, um, you know, either after it kind of launches and, and drops and everything, the discord kind of dies off. In your view, do you feel like it's, it's on the 10K project to basically, you know, pay staff to actually run those those discords and help out? Or what's your view on that? I think it depends on the the actual goals of the project. For us, like we, we do want to become um, quite a large project, uh, one that's around for years to come. So mm -hmm. we do want to scale it out and we want to have the right people. Um, so obviously for us, um, compensation, not only monetary, but we're really treating our, our team well because they're putting in a lot of time. Um, I think our yeah. Discord, it's close to about 30,000 community members. Wow. So wow. we do need a, a full team to manage wow. the day-to-day, -day, um, getting support and just continuously building um, new cool and engaging um, kind of gadgets within the, the Discord. So yeah, I think if, if you want to be serious about building a community, you do need a, a pretty large team to manage it. It's a, that's amazing. 30,000 is crazy. Seb's going, wow. I'm going, wow, too. Like, that's amazing, dude. Um, and I, 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 I like what, what I like about that is, and what I, I think certain PVP or avatar projects, if you can create kind of emotional experiences for people where they have that, um, an emotional experience tied to their avatar, um, it can be, uh, it can be powerful. Seb, what's your experience? Uh, well, walk us a little bit, Seb, cause you, you, you kind of grew your community over like years. Can you walk us through a little bit of that? Give people the rundown, just the overview of how that happened. And then it was like slowly, slowly, fastly, if you want to explain that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, ours is today, I think about 4,000, so uh, quite smaller than, than Lucas, but uh, back in 2018, uh, I think it was probably 20, right? <laughs> So definitely that uh, same kind of organic approach that uh, Lucas was uh, uh, mentioning, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of projects where, you know, you can feel like a lot of kind of, um, the, the kind of more of like inorganic marketing, let's call it, right? Like, and, and every, every, and I'm not saying that's wrong or, or you know, right? And like every project that thing has its own personality and goals. And I think you need to align with those. And I, I think uh, building those communities um, it's uh, super important, right? Like the, uh, I think a lot of it, the way I, I, I see about, I think about it is uh, that, you know, NFTs are all about decentralization, right? So um, the decentralization is making it possible for like the creator to connect directly with their collectors, right? With their fan base. And that's just amazing, right? That's what, that's what I love about um, this community is the fact that you can, you know, being constant connection and, um, you know, with your collector base and your fans and, and that enables a different type of, of connection, right? It's different than, you know, if like say like an outer goes and then says like, okay, I'm gonna go to this bookstore and sign books for my fans, right? Like, well, you connect with them maybe, you know, once every couple of weeks, right? But right. this this Discord, this, this community is like 24 seven, right? And that's right. amazing, right? Like, and they just keep growing. And like, if you put in the effort and, and the heart into them, which I try to do as much as possible, I don't have a formal team like uh, Legos uh, 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 does, but I do have moderators, I think we're seven or eight. They're mostly just friends of the projects and the folks that have been like super helpful uh, to yeah. the project and that share the same kind of the right alignment in terms of vision and values. and. and um, you know, they help me like just organically moderating really for now. I probably need a, a team eventually as, as it keeps growing, right? But uh, but I, again, as a creator, what, what I find fascinating is that ability to uh, interact uh, with your audience, you know, right there, right in, 
and and we try to you know give back to them as much as possible and um you know think about collectors uh, really take the, taking them into account as as you know we 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 do create new projects or create new new work right yeah. uh, to interact with them daily and uh you know all, all the tools that we have today they they're amazing from there's a parallelism in entrepreneurship, um, you know, the lean startup method where you say like there's this cycle of build, measure, learn, by right? like so in, in the tech startup world, you like go build something, you try to be as, as small as possible, so you can ship it and then you can learn from it, right? You can measure things, you can learn from it and then go build the next feature, right? It's a, a, a opposite to kind of more traditional thing where you like, you know, build a project from plan for three years and then build something on the vacuum and then it may work or not, right? And then if right. it didn't, then you then you wasted three years. Of effort, <laughs> like, right. Right. There's the same parallelism that's here enabling creators to collaborate and co-create in real time. And that I, f- I think that's what uh, excites me the most about these communities. Yep. I think uh, NFTs provide a really unique opportunity for um, creators and artists to create that bridge or that link between them and their fans. And um, Abby, I'd love to know, coming from a artist perspective, because these are what well, Seb and Lacos are really, these are large uh, projects, right? 10,000 drops. Uh, Seb's is, I don't know, 80. Uh, you tell, remind me, Seb, it's like 8,000 basically, right? It's um, 9,895. <laughs> yeah, it's a great number, right? Um, but but Abby, I, I'd, I'd really love to hear your views on creating basically collectors or um, benefactors, the, however you look at it, I'd love to know your kind of view of it, of, about how you do that as an individual artist. So for in, being an individual artist, I think it's really important to make the one of ones and having your additions, you treat that as like your prints. And for collectors early on, I was offering this was really early on when everyone was like really digital. I was offering physical work with the digital work that didn't go down too well. <laughs> but now tell, it's tell me, really... tell me why it didn't go down too well. Tell me about that. Everyone was very digital. So like you'll come into a clubhouse space and obviously because everyone was in lockdown as well. Everyone was on clubhouse and everyone just wanted a digital thing because of right. obviously the boom and everything like that. So I was like, okay, I'll hold back. Um, But then I started making a collector's token. So whoever bought my first series on Rarible, um, when that sold out, I sent collector's tokens to everyone, which was a special art piece. So I think you can do it differently. Obviously I don't have a Discord, but I do have a Twitter group. And my main aim of building a community is getting artists on board because it's quite nerve wracking to be like, I want to do this, but how do I get a wallet? How do I do all the other stuff? And how do I even price my work? And how do I collect, get collectors coming back? So I think it's that relationship that I'm more focused on. So, so you felt you've actually built relationships with fellow artists and you found that that was a way to basically reach a larger community? most definitely like holding spaces and like sharing your knowledge because when I came on it was completely different and things move so quickly that you're you basically learning as you go and new platforms come up but you need to gauge on what actually fits for you and what fits for your art type not just joining every platform you can that does help um, if you have lots of work like I do but if you don't then I think people should focus on what they want to do and like the bigger picture, not just mint every artwork they have as well. Yeah. I I liked your idea of, of rewarding existing holders. Um, Do you have like any sort of strategy around that? Or you just kind of like one, you know, you just be like, you know what, today's the day where I'm going to just give out some drops of Yeah, they don't know. (laughs) I'll just send them a DM or whatever. I'm like, hey, um, I've finally sold out or whatever. And then I'm like, go check your wallet or is it okay? Obviously, if I haven't spoken to them in a while. 
just to yep. double check because I don't want them just checking their wallet and be like, what on earth is this? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I just, I mean, that's what I've advised when people have, you know, I've advised lots of individual artists and I typically tell them, try and make your stuff as close to free as possible at the beginning because you want people to actually have your stuff and feel like they got something that they're immediately, it's more valuable than what they got it for. So pricing it very low at the beginning. Did you have a similar experience or were people, you know, were people buying your stuff for what you were asking at the beginning or, or what was your, cause a lot of artists have approached me with this. Do you have a strategy now? I'm sure it's different than January of yeah, like, exactly. if a new artist is coming, tell me what you, you advise them to do. By coming in now, definitely start small. Um, yep. I would even try hen as well for additions mm -hmm. if you can, but keep your additions small as well because yep. you don't want to yep. mint, say like 20 of something. It can work, but I would think having your small base of people knowing, okay, but there's only five of these out well, right. and they're right. out there and things like that. And also keeping, if you are on different platforms, keeping the projects different, I think that helps. So if you have a set collection on one, you know that collectors can go to that platform, see all the work they like and collect from there. Because everyone likes different stuff as well. And artists like to change their minds a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love that. I love that advice. Um, I think it's solid. And tell me, Seb, what you think about the idea of rewarding existing holders of your projects. Um, what's your viewpoint on it? Because it's different for obviously an individual artist where I think it can be, I think it's truly the way to build like lifelong fans for an artist. So I think it's really, really important from an artist perspective, from a larger uh, projects perspective, what's your viewpoint on it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I borrow from the traditional artist uh, um, uh, you know, mentality where like, you know, to like a famous painter, maybe, you know, at once probably gave a, a you know, a painting for a coffee, right? When, before he right. was famous, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so tra traditionally, I think like the, the, the way most artists have built uh, value for their collector base is just to continue to produce work and to continue to get better and better and better. And the more you do, the better you get, right? Um, and also to continue to explore different creative avenues, different media, different you know, different ideas, different themes, get inspired by different things. So like a little bit of what Alan says, like, hey, we like to change our mind. Well, that's, that's part of like, you know, like uh, being playful also, like keep it, you know, keeping it uh, varied, right? So um, I, I, I'm digressing a little bit here, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of take inspiration from there. And, and then I think like, you know, how do you, how do you apply that to, you know, the NFT tech, right? Because NFT tech obviously enables uh, new ways to reward that your collectors that, that, that couldn't be done so easily before, right? Um, so I try to find that intersection where like I get the inspiration from the traditional artist perspective, right? On how most artists would build value or time for their, for their collectors uh, and try to marry that together with, um, you know, with the tech that we have available, right? So like um, for me, um, I, I already shared this with um, with uh, with my fan base many times, but for me, uh, I have crypto art early collectors, which they have already received a gift uh, that was back in March, right? There's like about 300 or so, 350, let's say, right? Then I have uh, the whole crypto art holder community, right? It's about um, I think right now it's about probably 300, uh, 3,300 people. And yeah. then um, there's collectors that hold prime painting numbers, right? right. Um, so there's those three tiers, and those three tiers will each get different rewards in my, pro in my next project that I've been working on for a while. So it is something that I really built into my next project where like different right. collectors and different tiers will, uh, will get different rewards, right? And if you look at like, you know, poor apes and like how they done, uh, you know, uh, the, the dog uh, basically free mint uh, and then the mutant with the serums and all of that, 
I think they, they are an excellent project that uh, you know we can all learn and borrow from, right? So I get inspiration from those type mechanics. So you have you know you have the idea of like free means. You, you can also play around with the idea of um, you know discounted means. You can play the idea with airdrops, which is kind of like what Avi was mentioning of like, hey, yep. I'll just send, send them new work. Uh, you can play with the idea of tokens where like you can issue a token and reward them, or you can also play with the idea of DAOs, right? Like, so from the technology perspective, there's a lot of exciting different ways that you could go at it. Uh, I tried to kind of find the right spot for what I felt like aligns with the values of my project, but that's within, you know, giving unique perks and experiences and trying to create something that's more unique, right? Yep. Um, for the different type of holders and rewarding them that way. But also, you know, there's simpler methods, right? Like just being present on Discord, right? Like I try to be there every day. And whenever I can, I answer everyone's questions. I give support. Um, I can, you know, I can I tell you he is there every day, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> but building yeah, that so, community of, of people in the Discord, um, and Seb has a great core group of people in there who are big believers in crypto arte and support. And so anytime you do go in there, there's guaranteed to be people who are passionate about um, the project. And Lacos, man, when, when you're, you've already told us a little bit about like how, what you guys do on a daily basis um, to, to kind of engage your community. Are there things you do you, as a team? I'm trying to think for like a larger team here do you guys actually like roadmap hey we're gonna do a surprise here or a drop there H how do you guys think about it um like long term yeah and it's actually um the timing is quite funny that earlier um in the week we actually released our our new roadmap um and yeah there's there's some kind of big ticket items that were listed there um, because I know the community has been asking for them and that's kind of like what we're working on. That's going to take a little bit longer, but there's also those surprises that we just don't want to, to ruin, um, uh, for the community. Um, so we do have, uh, kind of like the, the public roadmap, but then also the private roadmap that involves a lot more detail and a lot more initiatives that no one really knows about, um, because at the end of the day too, there's a little bit of um, game theory involved and you wanna create value, but you don't wanna really just show all your cards because some of these executions might take months and months and, and with how quickly the space moves is that if you kind of give a little too much early in the game, someone could easily beat you to the, um, to the punch. So it is it is a balance and and it's hard not to kind of spill everything out at first and 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 yeah we just have to keep uh some things kind of a little tight tight to the vest it's um yeah. it's interesting it's this idea of like um and maybe abby can can give a better i a better example than me but um the idea of almost surprise and delight and so it's like um you know when somebody doesn't expect it coming and then it shows up um it just creates like kind of what i touched on before this i this emotional connection uh whether it's uh a koala a crypto arte or one of abby abby's pieces it's it's this kind of emotional experience um abby do you do you how do you look at that from your collector's perspective do you like you're the you're the artist. So are you trying to create those emotional experiences when you're doing uh, a drop to them for for free? Or what's your vision of that for your collectors? So they don't know anything like they literally do not know anything. And to the point where I don't like I do not tell anyone I think you should move in silence. Sometimes I think that's good. And also, if a good thing is if you find out that it's your collector's birthday and you're going to do the token or the free art piece, maybe send them a thing like happy birthday or something like this. That's what I've done before as well. And they've woken yeah. up to it and they're like, oh, hey, like, what's this? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, the element of surprise is very good. Also, I'll like show like little snippets of the work in progress. 
but not actually show the full thing. And then they're like, oh, I've seen it in stages now, but I didn't know that was going to turn out like that. I think that's very good to keep people on your journey as well. You guys are catching some serious alpha here today. I mean, if any of you are doing, I mean, I'm just like taking notes because this is like this, you're, you're seeing behind the curtain, um, three people, very successful with very different projects, uh, to be able to see how they kind of do their secret sauce is, um, it's pretty darn special. Uh, I, I know, I don't know how much longer we have. Do we have all the way to the top of the hour? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I'm you, not exactly sure how they're going to like cut us off here. Greg, f five more minutes, Adam, five more minutes, five more minutes. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's funny because yeah, we, I just don't know like the uh, time frames, but that's awesome. Um, yeah, like the communities and apes and all this sort of stuff and just the way it works, um, is so interesting and different from a, a individual collector's perspective in the 10, 10 K, but I do look at it from a bridge perspective of NFTs or a bridge to fans and community. Um, and so I'm glad I got to talk to you guys about it. Seb, why don't you lead us off if you have some final words for, um, for everybody here, maybe where they can connect with you and find you. Actually, I'll get in the chat here and maybe put in some, uh, some links for you guys right now. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Um, and, and thank you for being an, an, an awesome uh, moderator for, for the panel and, and for all the work that you do for the space. Uh, it, it's incredible how many creators and projects you've, you've worked uh, uh, with and helped uh, in the past, just in the past couple of months. Right. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so everyone can find my work. The, the project's uh, website is cryptoarte.io. So that's uh, crypto and art with an E at the end uh, for, for the Spanish mixed in. Um, so cryptoarte.io and I'm also cryptoarte on Twitter. And you can find the link to our Discord um, channel on, on the website as well. There's a little icon on, on the footer. So you can, from our website, you can uh, join the Discord as well. And I'm popping your links, uh, at least the Twitter links in there. Um, Abby, can you tell us a little bit about what you have next for uh, projects going on? Oh, I have many projects. Um, I've just released uh, Destroyed Backgrounds, so you can check that out. Um, they're quite reasonably priced. They're an offset of my destroyed paintings. So everyone who bought a painting, their painting is now destroyed and it only lives on the blockchain. And I had something drop on FND and also a collab project with 22 artists doing the mirror um, artwork on OpenSea as well. So there's a lot Amazing. to check out of me. I'm bloody Ama everywhere. <laughs> Amazing. And it's so interesting. I, I interviewed um, uh, this guy, Harm, who's a, a quite a famous artist who was basically uh, minting art on Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain back in 2015. And he said back then he couldn't give away the tokens. Nobody wanted the tokens. Everybody wanted the physical piece. And it's so interesting how that's completely flipped uh, in the last few years. And I think that's amazing. Um, Lacos, man, do you want to have some final words about what you got going on and what's happening with the koalas over the next uh, few months? Yeah, we so for the koalas, we're delivering a lot of new things. Um, we're getting into the metaverse and some, like I said, some big ticket items, but really what, what I wanted to close off is the, the idea of community and beyond just the, the koala community or the three communities that we've talked um, tonight, but, but really it's the NFT as a whole. Um, I think Abby mentioned that when you first joined or she talk, she's talking to new artists, it's a bit of a, um, a scary environment for people that don't know anything about crypto. So I would say as a, as a community, as a whole, we need to help each other out to really onboard the masses into the community, help them understand we're creating the Koala Academy, which is going to um, be a, a free source of information, everything crypto and NFTs for anyone to come. Um, and I'm always happy to answer any questions for anyone about the space. So I, I think just in general, for me, that is a community, right? Like NFTs, crypto, art you name it, it's, we're a, a very small group of people when you actually look at the, the grand scheme of things. So I think we really need to stick together and help each other out. And I love that. I mean, if you're like me, you've probably got 
10 calls in the last three weeks uh, asking you how to get a MetaMask and how to get Ethereum and what Everything. is Ethereum. Uh, so I think you you have a big road ahead of you, man, doing that because it is like there is such a need. It's, uh, it's incredible. Um, and I put that out there to everybody who thinks maybe you're too late to the space. Um, understand that maybe 100,000 people in the world have an NFT right now, maybe. Um, so we are all very, very early. I would, I would put that out to everybody and, and understand that we are really the pioneers in the NFT space. And so I encourage everybody out there who's thinking about, well, what should I do? Should I just buy and sell NFTs? Well, you can do that, um, and that's cool. Uh, but you could also build something in the NFT space. You can be an artist in the NFT space. You can be a developer. You can do podcasts like I do. Um, and we have the amazing and magical opportunity to build this space together. And uh, I think what was just said is that we are all building this together. And I think that's really, really special.